Hey guys, uh, welcome to week four to Simple Steps to Help You Grow in Christ. Uh, I'm Rob Arsenal, lead discipleship pastor, joined by my friend tonight, Tom Mellon, our global pastor. I hope you've had fun with this uh, little series we put together on Wednesday nights. If you recall, uh, we started about four weeks ago uh, with our kind of New Year's revolution series. And we met you that first Wednesday night to talk a little bit about fasting and prayer. In fact, it's not too late to still sign up for the fasting challenge on Thursday evenings. We've got one more week left. Uh, you'll see the text to number on the screen. And if you want to join us for that, go ahead and uh, reply to that text right there. And then week two, uh, we came back and talked a little bit about worshiping together and the gift that that is. And then last week, uh, Luke and Hillary joined you to talk about Bible intake and getting into the word of God so God's word could get into you. And then Tom and I are here tonight live with you to talk a little bit about finding your people. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about getting connected in the groups. And then we've got a bunch of our friends uh, joining us via the chat box. So if you've got some questions about groups or getting connected, you can drop your question there in the chat. And uh, they'll be going back and forth with you throughout the evening. But what a great message last weekend. I can tell you from the, the perspective of a lead discipleship pastor, it's been great to hear these messages the last couple of weekends and then bringing it home last weekend, with finding your people. And this idea of connecting and committing deeply to relationships in a group, a place where you can be honest and real, a place to share Christ-like care, and then a place to strive for unity. And what a fantastic picture uh, ben did on the stage right out of Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. And he got out that big grinder on the stage and started firing away at that anvil and sparks were flying. And I mean, I was so excited and into that message. It really got me excited for helping people get connected. Just seeing those sparks fly gave me goosebumps. Well, uh, when you think about a grinder and what that was able to do last week, you think about what we need to do when we're together with one another. Grinder can help us remove those bumps and imperfections that each of us have. If you leave a grinder in a place for too long, it'll leave a mark on you. So we want to find and talk about finding our people tonight that will help leave a mark on us. Well, uh, besides COVID this year, there were a lot of crazy, powerful forces that pulled us apart from one another. And from a groups and discipleship perspective, it seemed kind of crazy to tell people to get in groups when we can't even get within six feet of one another. So we were isolated in all kind of different directions. But I got to tell you, it's funny the way God works, because just like he designed last year, we still were able to provide community and help people get connected. That looked a lot differently, not a little bit in person, but a lot more on Zoom and on uh, social media platforms. I think about uh, the scripture from Acts 246 really brought uh, groups to life for me last, uh, last year. When you think about uh, as the apostles walked through uh, the book of Acts together, they met together regularly in the temple courts and broke bread together in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. And hey, speaking of the book of Acts, let me turn it over to my friend Tom, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so we've been running through the book of Acts here uh, with, with our groups on Tuesday nights. More than welcome to join us. Uh, we just read chapters 5 and 6 last night, and uh, but it, it, you can jump in at any time because Acts has 28 chapters. So come on along and, and see the kind of community that the Holy Spirit started and how you can be a part of it. You know, it's amazing, Rob, because right at the very beginning, God created us. He created man and woman together, and he said, you know, it's not good for man to be alone. And, and immediately, uh, man and woman came together with their family, and the, the, the purpose of that was to have that kind of that community that they had together. And then also immediately, sin entered the picture. And when sin entered the picture, that, that's come some of that centrifugal force that Ben talked about over the weekend, it started pushing people out of the circle. It started mm -hmm. kind of, 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 of disqualifying them, at least they thought, from being a part of the community. Entered guilt, entered shame entered fear. So when we come together to, in groups then, and we understand how that happened in the book of Acts, what a great way then to see how God wants to draw us back together, where we can deal with those three, three things and really be a, a, a solid biblical community together. 
I, I love a couple of the quotes that Ben shared. He said the quote from Dietrich Bonhoeffer where he said, the one who is alone in sin is utterly alone. Mm. The one who is alone in sin is utterly alone. Well, God's intention for us was never to wallow in our sin and to be utterly alone. We've got to work together with each other. Another thing he said that I thought was awesome, when we are divided, the world cannot be Jesus. When we're divided, the world's like, yeah, look at those people. They're divided like everybody else. No, no. The, the, the story of the book of Acts and why God wants us to be together is to be attractive to the people around us. To, to, to our, our oneness and our unity helps bring people into the body of Christ. When, when, when they see that we can get along despite our differences. You know, when I, when I came here, um, 15 years ago now I've been here, and immediately I got involved in groups. My wife and I got involved in a, in a couples group, and I got involved in a men's group, and we've still done various iterations of that for the last 15 years. Because we know we have got to be together with other Christ followers. Iron sharpens iron. We work together. We support each other. We encourage each other. We hold each other accountable. It's just the nature of what it is. But 10 years ago, my dad died when my small group rallied around me. They did some work at my house. They loved on me. They took care of me. They, they sent me to Minnesota to visit my dad before he died. They, they just took good care of us. That's what the body of Christ does. That's what the community does. So that's what they did in the book of Acts. Uh, you've, heard, you've heard a lot about Rooted. That's what we do in Rooted. Rooted is that the experience of coming together as disciples of Christ to live and work and, and share life together so that the world around us can see us. So that's been 15 years ago for me. Rob, I know you've been here about 20 years. What, what was it that got you involved and how did you find your people when you came here? It's hard to believe it's been 15 years, Tom. I actually remember meeting you when you were still a missionary in Brazil because I was, uh, I think, an adult student leader for a, a group of seniors. That I remember that, yep. And you were still abroad and what a small world that God brought you back to Mountain. Well, yeah, uh, my wife and I have been at Mountain about 21 years. A bunch of you have heard our story before. Uh, we were blending a family of five, which soon became six about a year later when Morgan was born. And the church thing was kind of new to us, and we had no idea where to start. So there I can remember seeing this advertisement for growing kids God's way. And I was like, huh, I probably should figure out how to raise kids God's way since I got a bunch of them now. And, and we joined a group and ended up being – an 18-week uh, class, a little bit about marriage, a little bit about raising your kids. Uh, I remember failing that class because our kids still weren't. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we actually liked the class so much, uh, we took it again. I jumped in a bunch of men's groups at the time. I, I remember the men's group on the third floor of the Mountain Center like it was yesterday. I was so nervous and so afraid. I can remember the end of that very first meeting, someone asking if anyone wanted to close in prayer. And I tell you, my eyes hit the ground. I started counting the cracks in the tiles. I was afraid that they were going to make me pray. And now I look at 21 years later, I, I've lost track of how many groups that I've been a part of. But I got to tell you, one common denominator has been my wife and I's couples group. We've been in that for 18 plus years now. i uh, done a bunch of different studies, but that's the folks we've been going through life with, we hang out with, well, when we can hang out. Uh, go to dinner with. We've been on vacation with a few of the couples. It's just been a great way uh, to meet people and, and find that core group of friends to go through life with. And I'll tell you, the root experience was a little bit of that for me as well. I got to meet a great uh, bunch of people the first time I got to facilitate Rooted. And uh, that's led to a bunch of those people facilitating Rooted and giving other people a chance to find their people. But, hey, I don't want you to just hear it from me. I want to turn it over to my friend Brian, uh, the discipleship pastor at the Aberdeen campus. And he's got a little story from the first ever Aberdeen Rooted group. So go ahead and give this a listen. Welcome everybody, so glad you could be here with us tonight. My name is Brian Hancock. I am the discipleship pastor at the Aberdeen campus. And with me tonight, I have the very first Aberdeen campus rooted group with me. Woohoo! That's right, four of the ladies from the actual rooted group. Um, we are so happy that you guys could be, the ladies could be here with us tonight. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna introduce them. The very first person I'm gonna introduce you to is the facilitator of our first lead, uh, rooted group. Uh, Sabrina Kosum is here with me. Woohoo! I have uh, Linda, who is now the facilitator of the rooted life group that kept on going. That's right, Linda's with us tonight. Woohoo! 
And then I have Samantha and Michelle with us. You know why they're important? Well, first of all, they're important. But you know what's really what's really great about them being part of this is that they have committed to facilitate rooted in the spring. Woohoo! Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. We love it, we love it. Um, and so I have these ladies on here with us. And I wanted to ask just a question so that they could get their get their um, insight on what Rooted means and what Rooted has been like for them as a part moving forward. Sabrina, why don't you go first? Of course I will. So I would describe Rooted as a life-changing and transformational experience. Everybody on this call knows that I've been in Rooted in every aspect I feel like possible, unless you guys create something else. And I shift into that. I've been a Rooted coach. Um, I have went through Rooted, I facilitated several times, and I just, I love the experience. Every single time I went through Rooted, it has brought something new. I'm all about connecting, doing that deep dive, and just creating those healthy rhythms. And this was a great group of, um, a great group of people. Um, I was so happy to be a part, to be one of the facilitators. It was awesome to have you there, Brian, you know, and Louise. Um, so, I mean, I, I would say to anybody who's thinking about doing Rooted, it's for you. If you think that it's not, it's for you. That, that is awesome. 100%. It's for you. It was for me. It's for you, too. Uh, Linda, why don't you tell yeah. us what your experience was like? Absolutely. Um, and I agree, Sabrina. It's for everybody. And it is life-changing. Um, it deepens your faith. You have an ability to make new relationships, new friends. Uh, we got to work with our discipleship pastor, with our campus pastor. To me, it was a perfect group. Um, going into Rooted, I really wanted to gain wisdom. I wanted to deepen my faith. Um, and I felt really, to be honest, that I had to have all the answers to all the problems, not just mine, but my kids, my grandkids, my coworkers, and those that I'm working with and mentoring. But during Rooted, I realized that it pleases God when we humble ourselves and come before him and ask for wisdom. Um, today, asking for guidance through the Holy Spirit is one of my favorite things. I like, it's, it's just, it's beautiful. Um, I've gotten some really um, great responses from the Holy Spirit, some good direction that I, I would not have necessarily gone in that direction. Um, and for me, God's promises of wisdom really was one of the best kept secrets of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Now I know that go before him humbled, ask boldly. He wants to bless us. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that in my life. Wow. Um, that's one of the biggest things. Well, really the biggest thing is this, my baptism. Yeah, so I was baptized as a young child, like most of us. And um, I always had a, a desire to be baptized publicly through immersion. Um, I'm a shy person by nature. Um, I never really had the opportunity for that um, until Rooted. So at the end of the rooted experience, I just felt God nudging me very strongly. And I was timid, but excited. And I, I'm thrilled. I keep this certificate at my desk. I see it every day. Um, I'm very pleased that on December 4th, 2020, I confessed to Jesus Christ as my savior. That's so awesome. So awesome. What a great story. Uh, Michelle, what about you? What was your experience like? Michelle, you're still on mute. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> um, so as Sabrina and Linda said, it was definitely a life-changing experience for me. Um, going through life, um, I just found myself very, I guess just, I want to say the word lonely and just didn't have any direction. And I feel like um, Rooted was a great start for me, not just to um, connect with 
the church and to also find a sense of community, but also to connect myself with God and to build that relationship that I so desperately needed in my life. Um, and it was just awesome, like just to hear other people's stories and just to know that I'm not alone in my journey and to know that at any given time I can reach out to Sabrina or I can reach out to Linda or I can reach out to Brian or I can reach out to Luis or I can reach out to any of us um, and just to feel that and know that, you know, we are all come together and, you know, God is right in the center of it all. It's awesome. And moving into my next, you know, step, I'm, like taking that commitment of being a facilitator, I want to be able to guide people in their journey as well and make them feel as welcome as Sabrina did with us. That's so awesome. And man, I just got to tell you, I can't wait to see what happens with these facilitators in our, in our next Rooted Batch. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Samantha, what about you? Yeah, so for me, um, before I started Rooted, I was really questioning my faith. And um, this was going to be like my last ditch effort for faith, for community, for church, for God's purpose for me. So, um, oh, I'm so sorry, you guys. My kid keeps running in and out. <laughs> so I remember, but I remember leaving the first meeting and already thinking about how much I love the people in the group. Um, so I thought, you know, if nothing else came from it, at least I would really, I would meet some really awesome people. But um, thankfully that wasn't the end of the journey for me. Um, each week I felt as though the um, lessons were directed right at me and I, um, the Strongholds Week was really an eye opener for me. Um, it, it opened my eyes to all the things that were getting in the way of my relationship with God. And through the stories of the people in my group, through the leadership, through the word of God, um, my faith has been restored. And I think it's um, stronger than it's ever been. And um, just like Linda, I, uh, at the end of the 10 weeks, decided to get baptized. And um, I truly feel renewed after after that. And now um, I'm getting ready to co-facilitate a group and you know continue on this journey with our life group. And I just feel um, really blessed to be a part of Aberdeen. You know, I feel like I'm part of something significant in starting in this church. And um, just feel blessed to be a part of Rooted and with these amazing people. So that's my story. Man, I got to tell you, so awesome to hear these stories. You know, it's not just it's not just what we what we've experienced. Right. It's it's more than that. It's about what we plan or what we're looking to experience in the future going forward as a life group. Right. And we had some amazing experiences, but God is going to lead us to something bigger and something better. And the cool thing about that is, is we get to do that as a community, as a group together. Um, and that's what the groups are all about. That's what this is all about. I am so looking forward to what God's going to do. And hey, look, thank you for being a part. We appreciate it. And let's wave bye to everybody out there in, in Facebook land. Bye-bye. We'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs> if you haven't been a part of group, now's the time to join. Well, man, wasn't that a great testimony from Aberdeen's very first awesome. group? I can't tell you what I'm more excited about with that. And that's kind of the perils and, and the yay guys and the downfalls of being digital and having to pivot as a group's team. We've got kids running in the room. Michelle, you're still on mute. That might be the quote of 2020. But, man, <laughs> how about celebrating baptisms, Linda and, and Samantha getting baptized, committing uh, to facilitating future rooted groups and helping – uh, more people find their people. And I'm just so excited about that. Well, guys, it's not too late because the, the group team's ready. We're ready to in person as we get ready to regather uh, next weekend. Groups have never stopped regathering. We've been meeting just about weekly, but we've also pivoted to digital and Zoom platforms as well. Plenty of places to get plugged in there. We're still offering child care free of charge. Come join us in groups. Drop your kids off. Uh, right now, media is still available for you through the website. If you're looking for Bible studies to just tap into at home, 
go to Mountain. We provide right now media for you. We've got this new group finder app. You can find a group uh, in your neighborhood that's meeting on a night that's convenient for you just by going to mountaincc.org backslash groups. You can search open groups by campus, gender, interest, whatever you're looking for. And hey, just the fact uh, that I realize a lot of you that have tuned in tonight might already be connected. Here's your challenge. Don't stop inviting because the best invitation to get connected and to help people find their people is a personal invitation. I still tease about my buddy, Justin Poland, who <laughs> set the record for the most invites from me before he finally said yes. I think it was about 10 invites that I invited him to join my group before he finally said yes. What about you, Tom? Well, I'll tell you, and, and you know, you might not find your perfect fit at the first time. You know, you might go to a group and think, well, who, who are these weirdos that I got grouped up with, uh, especially if you don't know anybody. A, a good case scenario, you know, you're invited by a friend or somebody that you already know and have some affinity there, but you, you might need to group hop a little bit, and that's okay. I mean, our, our bigger concern really is that you get with people that, that you can say, hey, these are my people. These are people that I can, I can be real with. I can be honest with, I can trust, you know, that the group will covenant together and say, you know, I, I need you to help carry my burdens and I want to help carry your burdens. So it might take you a little while. Don't, don't just kind of do a one and done thing. Ah, that didn't seem to work out. It's not for me. You, you might need to group up a little bit before you find that Christ centered community where you can finally build bridges of truth, of trust and, and uh, honesty with each other that are going to be strong enough to help carry that weight. Uh, another thing, just uh, to discover that folks that you can be with that won't reject you, that just they love you, maybe even in spite of you, just say, you know, you, you got wrinkles and warts just like I do, and I love you anyway, and that's good stuff. A place where you can share Christ-like care. You can be taken care of. You can help take care of others. But it, it is that two-way street, and sometimes it might take a, a time or two or three. Well, I tell you, if that was the first time, that's awesome. But don't feel badly. That you might need to say, hey, let me let me try another group with the different kinds of people or whatever. That's that's totally fine. Really, you guys, to be honest, we just want to strive for unity. We want you. We, we all need to be in a place where we can have that unity in our midst. But we're just saying, you know, unity matters. It matters to Jesus and his his disciples. We have to strive for that. So find a place, albeit that's challenging, perhaps for you, not necessarily an easy thing, but where you really can be open and honest. You can find unity without having to have uniformity, but you can come together as a group and just say, you know, the Holy Spirit is in our midst. He is the one who makes us, who binds us together as a group. And we're going to take care of each other because of that. And then we're going to show this unity to the world. And like that quote that I read earlier, you know, it's, it's our grouping together and being one in spite of our differences that's going to invite the world into that. And, and they're going to want a piece of that. And they're going to want to be a part of that. So I tell you, uh, just grouping up and being together is huge for us. Well, hey, uh, Tom and I do talk fast, and we get a lot of words in two minutes. So I'm going to try to slow it down and bring us home here. If you've got any questions on how to get connected to any of the things we've talked about tonight, go ahead and drop your questions in the chat there, and someone from the team uh, will point you to the right website uh, to get connected. But So just as a recap, so group night is happening at just about every campus on Tuesday nights. Now, campus groups started a couple of weeks ago. We're going through the book of Acts. Like Tom said, it's not too late. We've only covered the first six chapters. There are 22 chapters to go. Uh, if you sign up now, we're going to let you get one of these cool-looking canoes and a couple of paddles. I'm not going to tell you what they're for. You've got to sign up to find out. So that's a teaser for the Book of Acts that's happening on Tuesday nights at all four campuses. And then starting in just a couple of weeks, I believe it's the second week of February, we're going to start the Rooted Experience. You heard about Brian's Aberdeen group uh, down there, the first ever Rooted group. We've been running Rooted now, I want to say going on three years, and we've had close to 2,000 people go through the Rooted Experience. It really is your best first step if you're looking to find your people. Uh, registration's open for that. You're going to learn about some of the rhythms that Jesus practiced uh, with the apostles, and you're actually going to experience some of those rhythms with your group during the 10-week Rooted Experience. So definitely not too late to sign up for that. Like I said, that starts in a couple of weeks, uh, and you can find more about that on the web. And then Celebrate Recovery, I got to tell you, it's been a tough year for all of us. 
Uh, but for, especially for those with Hertz habits or hangups, Celebrate Recovery is doing well. We're meeting back in person on Friday night. There's also a Zoom option if you just want to come in digitally on Friday evenings as well. That information's available on the website as well. And then I got a bonus, uh, bonus plug for the men that are listening tonight. We are hosting the Men's No Regrets Conference on Saturday morning, February 6th from 9.30 to 1.30 registration just went live for that a few nights ago uh, so if you've got some guys that are interested in, in a short men's event on a saturday morning uh, go ahead and send them over to the website they can go to the events page and sign up for that uh, so hopefully if you've got any questions you've dropped them in the chat and you're getting the answers that you need like i said you can always go to the mountaincc.org uh, groups page and uh, find out uh, how to get connected there uh, I think that's going to do it. We're right at about 7.30, Tom. Uh, I can't believe we're actually right on time. I'm going to turn it over to you, surprisingly enough, and, and we'll get everybody out of here on time if you would just close us out in prayer. Yeah, and we talk fast drop, so maybe that's why we made time. But I heard somebody liken you know, our, our, our experience in Christ as a two-winged bird. I mean, a, word, a bird has two wings, right? And, and it, the bird flaps its wings and it moves forward. Well, the one wing is like the large group experience, coming together and gathering really to pay attention to God and to honor God in our worship opportunities. And then the other wing is like the small group community wing, like we read about in Acts. So both of those wings working together, large group, small groups in homes, working together to propel us forward in the movement that Jesus started. So super excited. Rob, thanks for the time to share with you here. And all y'all, you know, get involved in a group. God made us for this. And it's really, we've got to be a part of it in order to move ahead and let the Holy Spirit work in and through us so that the whole world can know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the chance to be together tonight uh, through, through uh, Facebook Live and just this opportunity to gather just to say, Father, thank you for providing for us opportunities to get to know each other, to be together. Hmm. We long for that again in the midst of COVID where we've been kind of driven apart. Uh, yes. We know the day is coming and, and we still can, as we've mentioned, through Zoom meetings and opportunities like this to come together and to, to be together and to experience life together. The Holy Spirit, our prayer that you would connect all of us in groups, help everybody in our listening and everybody in the body of Christ around the world to say, you know, I gather in the large group to worship and honor God and I gather in the small group yes, to worship and honor God, but then to work together with my brothers and sisters in Christ so that our unity can show the world that yeah, we, we can be one in the midst of all of our different. So, uh, raise us up, Father, put us together, group us up, help us to make opportunities to, to invest in each other's lives in the unity that we share in Christ so that the world may know, Lord Jesus, that you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we pray these things in your marvelous and wonderful name. Amen and amen. Amen. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. See you soon. See you at church this weekend as we read. everybody.